Florida. Florida. Hello. Hey! <laughs> What's up, party people? Someday I'm going to address you as party people and sing all of Woomp There It Is by Tag Team. Mm -hmm. But They're today is not that day. Uh -huh. uh, Joe, Dan, Lon. Yep. Uh, we're talking... All of the Tim Burton films. <laughs> yes. The entire filmography of Tim Burton. One today. at a time. So you let's know, start. Pee Wee. You, yes, let's start at the beginning. <laughs> well, Frank and Weenie. No, no. That's the shorts. Well, um, guys, let's all just talk in very uh, clippable sound bites. Tim Burton. Cancelled? No. <laughs> no. Not, not in my house. Is he supposed to be canceled? No, no. I was joking oh, okay. before the show that it would be funny to all pretend that oh, Tim Burton was, was canceled oh, for some right. horrible thing that we're not going to mention on the air. <laughs> oh, I took you very seriously. But it's not true. Tim Burton, yeah. a lovely man. <laughs> Apparently so. I, Allegedly I heard, a lovely man. I haven't heard anything horrible. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> so Dumbo's coming out. Yes. yes. That's why we did this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because we well, it was hard to figure we'll out. We'll cling like... to whatever tenuous connection to something that we can to yeah. justify doing a trailer sometimes. Uh, the original Dumbo movie... What do you really say? It's it's it's, it's very, less than an hour long. Yeah, it's yeah. very short. It is those birds um, are racist, questionable yeah. at best in 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 places. And uh, where, where are you gonna hang your hat? Yeah, we did the we did the we did the Disney's weird past thing with, with Jungle uh, Book, Jungle right. Book, and we, we don't want to do it all over again. Dumbo is really, I feel like the pink elephants on parade sequence taken on such a larger cultural significance than anything else in the rest of that movie. Yeah, it's kind of like the whole movie exists. I for just that remember five that in Racist Birds. That's all I remember yeah. about Dumbo. It's it's and even the Racist Birds only come in at the end. Yeah, mm. it's like fifty minutes long. It's 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 barely a feature. It well, is. which in hindsight, if we had figured out a take, would have been much easier <laughs> than watching eighteen feature-length Tim Burton movies. Yes, that would have been much easier. Oh, uh, guys, make sure you send him some love online. Uh, D Dan took the brunt of this one. <laughs> yes, I oh, got yeah. <laughs> when assignments were being given out, it was like, okay, Lon and Danielle, uh, why don't you work on Aquaman, and uh, I'm going to work on Spider Verse. Dan, um, <laughs> why? You need some eyes on all these Tim Burton movies. Dan, you like watching lots of things and hate to say no. Uh, yes, that's true. Yes, I watched all 18 <sighs> of Tim Burton's features. God I bless think I've you. watched 10 during the time, I think about 9 or 10 during the time mm -hmm. we were making this trailer, but certainly not all 18. There were some that were as bad as I remembered or worse. Yep. Movies like Planet of the Apes and... Um, Alice in Wonderland that I'm very happy I'll never have to watch again. I, I think Alice and Dark Shadows are by far the two bottom of you this see, filmography. See, I actually, maybe because this was the way it was set up for me, I did not mind Dark Shadows. Oof. It wasn't great, but I, I laughed. At, it wasn't like uh, the abomination you were expecting? No, I, I didn't think it was a terrible movie. Uh, maybe I, just me, I don't know. I do not care for that Dark Shadows. Fair right? enough. Well, it just, it just feels like it's in the middle of being four different movies. Like, if there's four different movies out here that could have worked, and it's right in here. Like, trying to be all of them at once. Took center so square. It just doesn't, just doesn't, it's not funny, yeah. but it's not scary. It's like, what is it? I don't know. I did not watch The Nightmare Before Christmas, because we discussed it, and it's, it's not, not a directed Burton. film by Tim Burton, so that was not included. We it referenced is. that in the trailer, because we knew that was the first thing that people would mention. It's sort of a yeah. Garth Marenghi, where it's like based on a tune <laughs> whistled by Garth Marenghi. Yeah. 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 But I mean, when people um, think of Tim Burton, they think of that movie. Nightmare Before Christmas. And it's yeah. not, yeah. we didn't do it that, because then it was like, well, because if, we if we do Nightmare Before Christmas, then we have to do Hoffa. And all the other movies he <laughs> produced that didn't need to do right. Yeah, too. exactly. Yeah. So where do you draw the line? So we just did the name, the little tip of the hat to Jack Skellington sure. in the trailer. Plus, I had 18. I couldn't really do many more. It's, well, big yeah. picture. Yeah. How, how do you feel about Tim Burton? Um, I mean, everybody... Everybody knows the certain thing, that Danny Elfman and mm -hmm. the gothic style. But there were small things that you start noticing when you watch them all together. Like, there's one thing that's not in the trailer that was originally the trailer, but just characters watching television. And then you I look at a bunch of interviews. I watched a lot of interviews, and he talks about being brought up largely in front of a television as a babysitter. Mm -hmm. the, the suburbia and the, uh, you know, and, and the fact that all of his characters are, and he didn't even write all these scripts, but he seems drawn towards stories about outcasts and then, that was very much how he grew up. He grew up as like this kind of, he talks about you, people get categorized early and you're weird if 
you're into certain things and you, so much so many of those themes just feed into his films yeah we talked about one other thing that going back now and watching some of the movies after thinking about this it's remarkable is that he loved Frankenstein as a kid yes and if you just all you think about is that story it mm-hmm. informs so much. There's like bringing people back from yeah. the dead. And, Making people. And mm-hmm. people, right, being stitched up and sort of half complete and hybrids of, of all these things together. And like, you know, he's he's creepy, meets that little girl. And there's that creepy scene where at first they play and it's sort of innocent. And then it turns really dark. <laughs> and the castle up on the hill with the villagers living all below. And it's like so much of those visuals yeah, have yeah, made yeah. it into his movies. And, and we talk about the elites, which we'll talk about in the trailer. Right. And, and weird things like hand. He hands. He likes hands. Right. Well, just, like just hands. contraptions, yes. like elaborate. You know, like the the opening of Pee Wee is what I always think of, where he's got the crazy breakfast machine. The yeah. one thing that couldn't make it into the trailer, I couldn't find a place for it, but is in every single movie is fish. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what it is about him and fish. I, I tried to find something about him talking about fish or why he likes fish. I mean, obviously beyond big fish, but every Tim Burton, every single one, a you're going to find something with fish. Fish tanks or fish heads or someone's in the fish Even, like, business. Anthropomorphized uh, walking, talking fish. walking yeah. fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's these weird things. It's the things that you know about Tim Burton, but then it's things that are either you can tell he identifies with because of that's how he grew up or just weird stuff that you're like, I don't even know what to do with this. <laughs> yeah, you talked a lot about, uh, we, you talked a little bit about like being like left in front of the TV as a kid, but that was another thing that came up is like, Parents who don't really care about you. Right. Like, parents who ignore their kids or who are sort of indifferent to their kids is such a crazy prevalent theme yeah. in all of these you, movies. You really see how, you know, when people talk about Kubrick and Hitchcock and how they brought their methodologies and, and mm-hmm. psychologies into the making of a film. And it's very obvious from watching their films that that's the case. But it's not something you would think about necessarily beyond just a style with Tim Burton. But when you watch his movies, all together, you were starting you, to know some patterns. You can see and, him, you, you see him in those movies, especially mm-hmm. the ones like Frank and Weenie and the ones that are like his babies. Yeah, that he brings. I mean, it's just so much about the outcast, the weird kids, the the, the bringing the animal, the, the, this thing about right. animals a and death and the dark, kind of a macabre, a dark haired kid who's soft spoken with like big eyes who feels very isolated and a little weird and yeah. you know like he's kind of darker and less confident than everyone around him like that obviously mirrors something Tim Burton feels he about himself, himself. Yeah. is strange yeah. and unusual and just very tactile <laughs> yeah. models and claymation and things you make with your hands and he talks yeah. about the fact mm-hmm. that he likes that he doesn't like green screen he likes sets and it's yeah. just it, it, it's 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 some filmmakers, you watch the filmography and you're like, they have a style, but you don't really see them in it as much. It's it's much more just, there's very stylistic touches, and there's some personal stories, and there's some that really aren't. Right. Spielberg is one. There's some Spielberg movies, he has a style, mm-hmm. and there's some Spielberg movies that are super personal, and then there's some that are just big Steven Spielberg movies. Right, like he'll, he'll make an E.T. where it's like, obviously speaks to things that yes. Spielberg felt growing up about being a kid of divorce or whatever, growing up with siblings or whatever, but then there are also Ready Player ones where it's like he just took this script yeah. and made it. You, know? you Watching a Tim Burton movie, no matter what genre it's in, you see something that is like that's that Burton. is yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. That is yeah. him, that is personal, that is his past and that's, I didn't expect that going in. I thought it'd be like, oh, trees and stitches yeah. and whatever. <laughs> trees and stitches. Yeah. Trees and stitches. Which should have been the name yeah. of the uh, of the trailer. Trees yeah. and stitches. So, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was kind of an well, interesting journey. Shall we watch it? Yeah, yeah, I just realized that all of our headphones are on the floor. Oh no. Yep. Um, right. Here, uh, just close on those. me. Close on me while those guys, uh, uh, close, yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna vamp for a minute while the guys just sort of like get on the Wrap ground and look for their head Phones. Oh, and we really should have done this before we started shooting, but sometimes we just don't think I'm about back. things. Mondays are usually thank you. I'm pretty busy here, so <laughs> Sorry, our brains aren't always in the right place. Perfect. Down. Nailed okay. it. Okay. I was going to say, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is a great example of he's taking somebody else's material, yes. but he still puts all this stuff in there. It's well, like a disaffected dad who doesn't care about his kid, teeth stuff. He added and, all that dad stuff with yeah. Christopher Lee and the teeth and the dentist. It's, 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 it becomes super Burton-y, yeah. even though it's this story we all know. Yes. In the worst way possible. Oh, no. <laughs> Tim freaking Burton. Tim freaking Burton. That's what I call him. From director Tim Burton, who never met a studio title card he couldn't darken, 
Okay, this one didn't need much help. Come see the movie that spans four different decades, multiple genres, and 10,000 pounds of white pancake makeup. Oh, my eyes are so bright. Every Tim Burton movie. Thank you, Robert, for that. Oh, that looks so great. I couldn't say what I wanted to do, so we did them all. Sorry, Robert, Robert uh, Holtby is amazing. He did our graphics. And it gave him some directions. Yeah, try this, try that. And eventually he did what he does, which is incredible. He's just like, yeah. I just sent you, I, I just did them all. Yep. So I think we have them so that everyone can actually yeah. see. Yeah, we, we didn't use see, all of them. We didn't use all of them, but uh, Robert being amazing is always and going above and beyond the Call of Duty. Um, amazing work. To Beetlejuice right there, obviously. Yeah. Put on your best striped suit and enter the mystical world of Tim Burton, so which much consists twirling. entirely of the suburbs, a lonely house sitting on a hill, or a lonely house on a hill <laughs> overlooking the suburbs, and meet a Tim Burton protagonist, a pale loner cast out by society and or their family, looking for acceptance and or revenge. Watch as they relive their tragic past through flashbacks. Many very sad flashbacks yes. happen in Tim Burton films, thinking about past. I'm sorry, I was having a flashback. Which These he... flashbacks happen often? Increasingly. Attend fancy parties, share the screen with a horror icon, or an actor playing a horror icon. Buzz. There were actually a bunch of horror icons that are in them that were we just weren't they weren't famous right. enough to put in there. Right. Well, they're, yeah. they're Elvira, not the actual character Elvira, but the Vampira. Act, Vampira, yeah. and then the actress who was later Elvira are right. both in Tim Burton films. Uh, but yeah, it's it's and like Michael to... Gow was in a ton of those old like Hammer horror Hammer films before playing yes. ha Alfred, and he's also in Sleepy Hollow. There's just like a bunch of examples of that. Yeah. We just picked the most famous: uh, Christopher Lee, Vincent Price, yeah. and then. Yeah. And then Bella Lugosi, Bell, Martin, Martin Landau, Landau as Bella Lugosi. Uh, yeah, so we don't have the real estate for uh, for some of these B and C sters. But <laughs> yeah, there were, I mean, but once I but once I sort of keyed into that and started looking it up, I realized like, oh, almost every Tim Burton movie has at least one person who you would consider mm -hmm. like a kind of an old school horror guy. And again, tying back into that, the reason why is that that that's what he was watching right. as a kid on television. His yeah. parents would leave him in front of the television. He would watch Vincent Price movies and Christopher Lee movies and. And th these old creature, and then he yeah. would just go on to t to make movies either about these people or with these people, even if it's a, a movie like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This is just whether it has any connection to that whatsoever, that's the kind of stuff yeah. that you find. Yeah. Which has got to be cool the day that like you're shooting Edward Scissorhands and Price shows up to shoot his scenes. Like That's yes. got to be a pretty it's, rad day. It is really cool the way he sort of uses a lot of the language of those old movies to create you know, new style. I watched Sleepy Hollow for this not that long ago, and, and the way that they sort of visually, like they're using new, what was in the year 1999, 2000, very state-of-the-art techniques and color shading and all these mm -hmm. elaborate sets to really make you feel like yeah you're watching a movie from the 60s like an old british yeah. hammer horror film and it's it's really cool how he can sort of do that like take today's technology to bring these old styles kind of back to life yeah second favorite burton film sleepy hollow let's go i love that one. fall in love with an ethereal blonde I'll blondes or something Ooh, yeah he's got yeah. birds <laughs> yeah oh he's definitely and got a thing with caged terrible birds parents. yeah he was a wonderful grandpa, but not such a great dad, you know? After that night, I didn't speak to my father again for three years. Your parents deserve to boil in hell's everlasting sulfur. <laughs> All while dealing with an antagonist that's probably wealthy, overweight, or both. You'll be sorry, Pee Wee Herman! Jeez, what did fat rich people do to this guy? Uh, pause. Uh, yeah, another one. Regardless of genre, mm -hmm. the often so often, the antagonist of the film is the elite, or the concept, even Batman yeah. Returns, the whole plot is about revenge on the elite, and the firstborn sons of Gotham, uh, the, the, the Sleepy Hollow, the plot is from the town's elite, from the yep. judge and the mayor yeah. of the town, the, the Frankenweenie, the mayor of the town is the guy, he's the elite, it's this idea of like the people in power the people are, are 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 not to be trusted. They're they're evil. They're he's very good yeah. at using a visual shorthand too to just make you immediately go, oh, okay, I know what I'm supposed to feel about this person. So yeah. you know, with the uh, they're either fat or rich or both. Yeah, like, it Otho, is a weird characters like that. Yeah, he yeah. does have a weird. It is a spectrum of the leaner and more gaunt and pale you are, the the better, and yeah. the the fatter and mm -hmm. more like vivid, the the worse. And and I mean, like you can really see. I know Nightmare Before Christmas. He came up with the story, he didn't produce, but. 
but it's so clear in Jack Skellington, rail thin, he's the hero, and the mayor, two-faced, he's the villain, and he's huge. Yeah. He's like yeah. basically a circle. Oh, yeah. And it's different sorts of elite, it, it, depending on the movie. Like in Gotham, it's this high society, but in Beetlejuice, right. it's yuppies. It's these people that come mm -hmm. in and destroy the yeah. old ways and and want to get rid of everything. Beetlejuice and, is actually fascinating. Like It's way before Americans were really keyed into gentrification as a huge problem, but that is what it's about. It's yeah. about these rich people from the city coming in and they're going to ruin Winter River with all of their money. The interesting thing... Uh, about it, and uh, I started thinking about this more. Uh, Maggie Mayfish on film Twitter uh, had a great Tim Burton essay because she hadn't really watched any Tim Burton before and cranked mm -hmm. through a bunch of them. Uh, and the interesting thing to me about that is that even though it is about gentrification, these yuppies coming in and wrecking everything, at the end of the day, the peaceful resolution is gentrification. Which yeah. I, with with well, Lydia I, sort of like putting on the letter jacket. It's and, a hybrid though, because mm -hmm. if you look, the house is restored to its farmhouse yeah. uh, yes. look. And uh, Lydia is a high school, but the, she is she's the foster parent. The, the ghosts are now her parents, really. And I yeah. think, it, yeah, it's a little bit about the the deets have to sort of come in and become part of the community. They can't yeah. keep their New York lifestyle in Winter River. They have to become right. locals, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's sort of a, it's, it's a mixture. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it, it's, it's this formation of a new... Which is, I mean, a lot yeah. of what that movie comes down to is about, like, sort of acceptance. Rather than don't fight it, accept your situation. Because that's the mm -hmm. problem that... that Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin. At first, mm -hmm. they're like, "We don't want to be dead. We got to get out of this." And then eventually, it's like, "No, no, just you're well, dead that's now." Kinda, uh, that's kind of the same as Edward Scissorhands too. That sort of don't fight it, accept what your right your cards are, yeah. I suppose, because. Yeah. You know that ends with Edward's like, well, going back up to McCreepy House. It's it's, it's you it's it, you can almost track his state of mind <laughs> a little bit as yeah, you yeah, go yeah. because yeah. I mean he and even in interviews he'll tell he'll tell you the movies where he was like in a dark place like Mars Attacks where everything is just the people that you think should live don't live and the people that you it's think should die don't. It's movie, very yeah. cynical and he'll yes. say like, yeah, I was in a real dark place when I made that movie. I was in a very cynical. You can see that. I mean, even between Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands, like Beetlejuice is about like the, the, the these new the, the, the new world, the inclusion of it, and then Edward Scissorhands, which is after Batman, this huge mega blockbuster, is sort of about retreating back to your little cloistered thing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. still being a. Pre it, it, I mean, it's just like the the psychology there is fascinating. To yeah, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and even with uh, with Edward Scissorhands, there's a lot of you you can talking about seeing Burton and his characters, you know, you have this guy and all of a sudden he's on the world stage, he's famous, he just did Batman. And uh, if you sort of apply that to Edward, then you have mm -hmm. the suburbs just turn on him, you know, kind yeah. of on a dime, this like new shiny toy. And then, and I think it's telling that the, the, he, he, the second he had the resources to do really whatever he wanted to do, he did that. A much smaller mm -hmm. movie yeah. mm -hmm. uh, about this acceptance of this loner, but but the world d d d didn't. It's uh, you could do you could write. I'm sure people have. You could write books. On oh this. yeah, yeah. There's, yes. There's a lot. Psych it's his movies are very psychologically rich. Yes. Well, because we didn't even talk about like. Uh, one of the other things that we were talking about when we were making this trailer is the, uh, the bullying and jealousy and even mm -hmm. like sexual jealousy. That also runs through literally all of these mm -hmm. movies. There's always an angle of like somebody being sort of sexually jealous of somebody else and this leading to all of these conflicts and Edward Scissorhands, you know, there's like the boyfriend and, yep. uh, and, and that's Who's just, rich, by the way. Yeah, right. Yep. And there's, it's just, it's so on his mind. It just keeps the same kind of ideas keep recurring through all of the movies. It's yeah. really fascinating. It, it is, it's, yeah. Let's keep going. Bye. Journey into the mind of a director who's constantly journeying into his own mind. Can we do some kind of fraud? I felt like I had to go of find some of these out Where this comes from? <laughs> you can try. <laughs> As he uses tens of millions of studio dollars to exercise his childhood demons. How strange were you as a child? From traumatizing <laughs> memories. In school, nobody seemed to really like me. <laughs> to childhood fears. I remember certain clowns. <laughs> I just like that sentence. <laughs> certain clowns. Yeah. Me. No, wait! <laughs> to the least surprising <laughs> fact about Tim Burton. I love skeletons. Okay, skeletons make sense, but what is it with Tim Burton and mouths? How about these? <laughs> it's weird. When you start that, finding these things. It's true, but that one is really weird because that's true like about Ed Wood. Like, that's, yeah. that's just factual. <laughs> Beetlejuice! 
Should... I've been lucky to make movies because I feel like I get to work out all of my psychological problems. <laughs> oh, sure. I have a yard full of dead trees and the city comes by, but Tim Burton does it and it's art. Uh, pause. So, the... uh, so, trying to figure out what to do with this, I had a suspicion that if, if I went on YouTube and tried to find every interview I could of Tim Burton, something told me that he would just blah, yep. and that he would just talk about His everything. Yeah. And sure enough, I watched, I mean, I watched, that's only that's a handful of clips. I watched a bunch more interviews, but it, it I mean, it, it, there it was. It was right there. He talks about it. Clowns. All the things you see. Clowns. Skeletons. Uh, 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 being mocked and laughed at, being a loner, being an outsider, even stuff that didn't make the cut, as I mentioned about being Watch put TV in front of the TV and, yeah. and and being labeled a weirdo. It's all there, and so I was very glad that those interviews were out there and existed because it, it sort of hammers home the you know. I, I thought like we could say that, like we could just say that Tim Burton is doing these things, but. It'd be so much better if we could find <laughs> actual <laughs> footage yeah. of him saying those things. So I was very happy that in going through that, that we were able to find uh, enough to make that run because it, it's all right there. Yeah, I just love the uh, the quickness of uh, I love skeletons. <laughs> I love skeletons. Yeah, <laughs> I love skeletons. One yeah, sometimes you find a sound yeah. clip and you're like, yes, <laughs> nailed it. That was one of them. Nailed when it, when I found it. him saying I love skeletons, I was like, thank that you. That was when I was watching uh, Mana from Heaven. Sweetie Todd and that guy does the line of like, we keep the blondes in we here. We keep the blondes. Yeah. Immediately you're like, well, that's going to be in the honest truth. Yeah, no, when, when I was watching Sweetie Todd and it got to we keep the blondes in here, I was like, oh, thank you. And okay, cool. No, I love it. And yeah. Button. Hilarious. Uh, I'm trying to think. I thought there was another one that didn't get included for some reason, but I don't I don't remember what it was. But yeah, we keep the blondes in here. It's like, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep, that goes in. That's going in. Going in. <laughs> So before you see his latest circus-themed creation, relive the films of a director who gave birth to the big screen bat, directed one of the most iconic comedies of the 80s, one of the strangest dramas of the 90s, helped kick the art of stop-motion animation alive, and also made these movies, (coughs) but is still best remembered for a film that he didn't even direct. What? What's this? What's this? It's not a Tim Burton movie, that's for sure. Uh, So pause. Uh, It's not... It's not, folks. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> Nightmare for Christmas is not a Tim Burton movie. Henry Henry Selick. Hmm? Henry Selick. 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 Yeah. Didn't write it either. Based on a story. Right. And he produced it. He had come up with that. Yes. He came up with those characters, and I think he wrote a poem. Right. Back when back in like the Disney days, he wrote this out as like a poem about Jack Skellington, and that was it. That's all that Tim Burton actually did on that movie. But. I I have to be honest. Going into it, I kind of saw this trailer going another way, where and it was an easier way of sort of coming in and being like, "Look at this weirdo and his trees and his pet goth and hot topic and everything." And I have to be honest. It's, it sounds weird, but through especially watching all those clips and things and, and the interviews of him and him talking, like I I I came like I'm, obviously we have to mention the bad ones and we did the yeah. bad movies, but my approach to it completely changed because as I as I watched his movies first of all and saw all these threads going through it and then saw his interviews and the fact that like he's not he, he's open about what, everything that he's doing and. I, I was just like, well, we can't trash this guy. Not because I want to hold back, but because like he's not pretending to be something he's not. It, none of it seems artificial, or yeah. like he's just trying to figure it out the well, same as everyone else. Also, at this point, like, is there anything really groundbreaking or interesting about being like that Planet of the Apes movie is pretty bad? Like, right. We already did another trailer yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, we did that. that. Right. Uh, didn't we exactly. did Alice? Didn't we? We did Alice. We did yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas. We did Planet of the Apes. The other thing I think that even though a lot of these newer ones are not great and I don't like them very much, it's it's hard because he. I'm sure if he if studios would fund Edward Scissorhands type movies from him. He would make them, mm-hmm, but like mm-hmm. that's not what Warner Brothers wants to give him money to do in 2019. Mm-hmm. Like Disney's probably only offering Alice Three or Dumbo or like one other option. So mm-hmm. like I, I don't know if this is totally Tim Burton being like I don't want to do old school Tim Burton style movies anymore. I just want to reboot Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Like that's what he's getting offered to do. What well, I'd be interested to find, and you could literally only do it by have sitting down and just like having a conversation, like an I like skeletons kind of conversation <laughs> with them. Yeah. But I'm curious if like, as you get older and you grow as a person, like all of those things that molded you when you were younger, like 
do you start to feel artificial if you hang on to them, if they don't necessarily apply to you anymore? You know, you've grown as a man, you've found success. Like, you know, it's for me, it's like, uh, uh, how many more songs can, like, the Death Cab for Cutie Guy write about being lonely? Right. right. It's like, yeah. you're one of, you're famous. He's like, kind of done it. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I get that, too, but I'm just saying, like, like it, it is, as a longtime huge fan of Tim Burton, mm-hmm. it is a little dispiriting that every time there's a new Tim Burton movie, it's like, well, I'm rebooting this old cartoon, or I'm revisiting sure. this old TV show. But I, I, it, I don't know how much of that you can really lay at his feet versus that's the, the industry right. that we're in right now. Yeah. There aren't scripts like Edward Scissorhands or Beetlejuice being sent to his office anymore. I just entered it kind of expecting to arrive at a situation where we point out all the stylistic things and we thrash mm-hmm. Alice and Planet of the Apes and Dark Shadows because I hadn't seen it yet. You know, it wasn't great. And Charlie the Chocolate Factory and talk about how he was this 80s icon, but look, now he's making all this junk. And the actual truth of it was so much more interesting to me yeah. than, than let's just crap on... Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure most of the comments will be like, I can't believe you guys just didn't like just shit on Alice in Wonderland for two minutes. And it's like, who cares? We already did, first of all, for four minutes on yeah. another and we've trailer. Done it before. And in some of those movies, they're just, they're boring. It's not even that they're so bad. They're just like, I'm not interested in this. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. nothing really much... To, I mean, I really... There's nothing much to say about that Alice in Wonderland yeah. movie. It's just a lot of visual noise and like, let's run over here, now let's run yeah. over here. Like, it's not yeah. interesting. And I, yeah. I, I agree with so you say sort of about like um is he just supposed to not work because studios are just like we'd like you to make a dark shadows movie or an Alice in Wonderland because on one hand you know you I, I it, obviously it's up to the artist it's interesting to see how like similar people go you could be Tim Burton who has you know paid his dues and every now and then gets offered a crap thing and is like okay I'll make the crap thing cuz this is my job and I, I like to work or, or you know on the other hand you like you have like a Yonan Vasquez who uh, you know, did Invader Zim and is like, my way or the highway and like, I'm, I'm never going to sell out. And yeah. it's like, I, I respect it, but definitely not working as much as a, right. as and a I mean, Burton. And it's also like a Tim Burton, he, to pull off these kinds of movies that he's doing, he needs a budget. He can't, like, he, he can do big eyes for a low budget and make a cool indie thing, but... You know, if he wants to make a movie on par with what he's been doing, he sort of has to have a Mm -hmm. major studio behind him. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I I almost see filmmaking for him as something that he has to do. Not, like, for money, but just because he has all of this stuff inside of him that he Mm -hmm. just has to Well, because he's doing all sorts of, of he does art, too, and he writes. I mean, Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy, that book of short stories. That's what I wonder about. He's a creative force. That's what I wonder about sometimes in, like, the shift in quality. Is it, like, Burton sort of has hit... And I'm not making fun of Poe. I think it's interesting to watch the journey of an artist. Like, yeah. did he hit a crossroad where like he had exercised enough, exercised enough of that stuff, and it's kind of like, now what, you know? And yeah. that's sort of where you get that shift of like an Alice in Wonderland, or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. We don't know. Let's keep going. <laughs> Probably starring Pale Face Johnny Depp, Lisa yeah. Marie. Helena Bonham Carter. Yeah, he did do that. Lisa Marie yeah, and Helena Bonham does. Carter. Yeah. That's the intersection oh, point. Flight of the Apes. Fear of commitment. <laughs> For so Stop! many people. I will never marry you. I would never marry you. But I don't know if I want to marry Hamish. Do you, Lydia, take this man? No! Graveyard. Pause. <laughs> That's another one. Yeah. Famously, mm-hmm. never. Uh, he, he was married once. Way before in the yeah. early part of his career, mm-hmm. never got married again. Had long term relationships with with uh, several a number with, of his with, leading a number, ladies. With, with Lisa Marie and Helen Bon Carter, yeah. at least. But again, that's the kind of thing. For those four movies: Big Fish, Corpse Bride, Beetlejuice, Alice in Wonderland. Not nothing in common, but that's a weird right. thing. and different writers. You see different writers, yeah. but again, yeah. I think it's thematic. It's something that that just like. It seems like a little bit more than coincidence. It's like yeah. this is just well, something you see yeah, running even, through. Even Bruce Wayne in in his movies, there's that the yeah. fear of commitment. Like, why won't you let me in? You got in. Like, it's not yeah. a romantic, sweet line. It's a very reluctant, frustrated, put upon mm-hmm. line. And you know, him and Catwoman in the second. Yeah, I mean, one. the romantic line with him and Catwoman is a. Uh, 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 
mistletoe could be deadly if you eat it. A kiss yeah. can be even deadlier if you mean mm-hmm. it. It's yeah, like, yeah. And then don't fall of, in love or you'll die. Yeah, and then it sort of flips <laughs> towards the end of that movie where she's like, the, the your fairy tale's garbage. and like Yeah, well, and she also murders Max Shrek with a kiss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this concept of the... There, this this fairy tale wedding is a, actually a nightmare. Yeah. Sweeney Todd, the yep. whole the song is yep. about. I mean, or, it's yeah. yeah. Falling and, in love is very dangerous and often leads to misery yes, in the yeah. end. Like Edward Scissorhands too. I mean, it's it's the very, story ends on a very down note after yep. he falls in love. Yeah. Uh, Big anyway. Fish is uh, not necessarily a fear of commitment with relationship, but that movie is about a guy that can't. Stop. He well, keeps moving and chasing, and and that feels like a later, a later version where there is still the thing of like, because that that's a, that's sort of about marrying or almost marrying the wrong person, right? As, yeah. as but it is ultimately a very happy marriage, and and, and yeah. you know, look at the time, and he was in that time in his life, he was in a very committed long term. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it just it, you just look at right. the different f- phases of life yeah. and it's just weird to see how Big Fish is an interesting work. one because a, he not only re uh, reexamining the commitment stuff but like that whole movie is reexamining his weird parent stuff. Yeah. Too. Yeah. 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 The, the 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 dad and reconciling with your parents with your father. I, I, you could write. I, I almost just wanted to start writing a book. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's Big, crazy. Big Fish also intercepts with Part another book. thing from him, which is like tall tales and stories and mm-hmm. legends and myths. And do you yes. really believe this or not? And yeah. it's made up, you know. Which is another thing that runs through all of his books. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. Graveyards, old gnarled trees, yep. contraptions. I think he just <laughs> likes designing and filming these things. Yes, yes. I think that's a lot of it. Is like this, this. It's his animators. My muscles, itch. my bones couldn't yeah. keep up with my body. The tactile things, right? Hands. Building stuff. I have a present for you. I'm this is a great run, too. Hand. Edward, There's so many the more. Man. Spinning around. <laughs> this is just a style thing. He just yeah. likes this. Imagery. There's like, actually there's two of them from Sleepy Hollow. I noticed the other day yeah. when I was watching it because she spins around there, but yeah, then there's horrible. also in the party Christina Ricci spins around. Yeah, there's there's a lot of spinning. <laughs> and we could put all of them in, but it'd yeah. be it's it'd too be much. A nine much longer trailer. Trailer. There's honestly trailer. too much spinning. Yeah, I do love that sequence of Big Fish. That guy's yeah. so happy that he's there. <laughs> the fairs and carnivals. <laughs> Scary faces. <laughs> <laughs> a witch. Follow the Indian trail to where the sun dies. She's a witch. Most towns of a certain size have a witch. Obviously. And models. A scale model of the entire mall! <laughs> <laughs> nice f***ing model! <laughs> Every Tim Burton movie. <laughs> 18 movies, and this guy still only made one sequel? Where's Beetlejuice 2? Bigger Fish, Bigger Eyes, Miss Peregrine's Other Home for Peculiar Children, Alice in Wonderland 2. Oh, they made that one, didn't they? Hello. Good call, Burton. You do, you, man. Yeah. No. He did not, luckily, for him. Yep. Oh. Well, there we have it. Those yeah. are all the Tim Burton movies. That's them. That's every Tim Burton movie. Hey, Lon, let me ask you this. Yeah. What's your favorite Tim Burton movie? Ooh, good question. I think I would probably have to go with Beetlejuice. Okay. Just because of the age. Like, it was such a pivotal movie in my childhood at forming my sense of humor. Mm. And I loved Michael Keaton as a kid. Uh, Dan? Favorite might be Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I Ooh. love Pee Wee. Yeah. It was a big movie for when I was growing up. And there's just so much... There's so much humor in that. Just that that conversation between him and Francis mm-hmm. has like the the comic energy behind it. Just just when Francis is mm-hmm. trying to talk, it's just like I love that story. You know, just, <laughs> yeah, and, and, like those different like that's so it's so underrated just as yeah. a comedy. There's so many great line deliveries in that movie. Like their yeah. comic performances in Pee Wee are just off the charts. Good, like Francis in particular. Like yes, in fact, without me, none of this would have happened to you. Right, Pee Wee? Yes. Like that stuff is so good. I think that is underrated just as a pure comedy, but I, I do I also find Big Fish to be incredibly moving. That's uh that's probably my favorite. Uh, uh, I love that movie. That idea of just Billy Crudup's character 
understanding his father at the last um and, and just the, 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 this the, it's just a very moving concept to me to 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 indulge in this idea that mm-hmm. when you are close to death that that it, it is this wonderful thing of everyone you know being there and it just I, I find it to be very moving I feel like it, it it uh it hits Americana in a more um I don't know real I guess Le- like legitimate way that like maybe a Forrest Gump or something like that that was more just almost almost like a firework show yeah. of America but this like um Big Fish just does it in such a just really like real soulful way that I really like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also would I would just want to throw out Ed Wood is also remarkably it's a great good. Movie. So yeah. good. And like really different from the other Tim Burton movies, but still feels like it it's got that core. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that yeah. Martin Landau performance. I, I owe it a rewatch because I haven't seen it in a long time. But when you when you said uh Beetle just sort of like formed your sense of humor and stuff like that, I remember uh Pack Theater, I went and saw Mars Attacks with a bunch of my high school friends. Mm-hmm. I was like the only one laughing in that theater. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was just a room full of crowded auditorium of people like, what is this? Yeah. I was dying. No, it's, I had the same experience. I loved Mars Attacks when it was new, and I feel like nobody else I knew was into it. It's yeah. an odd movie. It is. It's very I mean, it definitely weird. ends with Natalie Portman as the president with a mariachi band. Yeah. Hail <laughs> to the chief. Yeah. No, I don't think in retrospect, I don't think all of it works. I think it's a great, like, Huge, amazing cast. Burton does a great job. Mm-hmm. It looks terrific. The script is the script is not where the rest of the movie is. No. Like the jokes aren't mm-hmm. as funny. If the jokes were better, it would be a classic. I love Tom Jones with the wildlife and being a falconer and stuff. Like, that's hilarious, but <laughs> yeah, I just I wish the that. setup to get to that was a little, other than just like, ah, Tom Jones with a neat falcon. I just remember, and don't, I, don't yeah. run where you're friends. And, uh, but yeah, I, I just. The, the dialogue's just not, the, all the actors came to play. Like, Nicholson's doing that dual role. I just wish they had funnier stuff to say yeah. and do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they're all, a, they're all great. All, like, the performances, like, Pierce Brosnan is really funny in it. And, yeah. Like, it's a lot of good performances. I just the movie's material is not. It's quite. a weird one. It's yeah, a weird it's one. a weird one. Probably Sleepy Hollow's number two. Oh, I love that. I do <laughs> love that. Number two. Yeah. Very gothic. Starring our own sweet Casper Van Dien. Yes, oh, that's indeed. Right. Yeah, that's Brom right. Bones. Yep, yep, yep. Um, any other close? Oh, well, do we have any? Oh, yeah, we've got our titles and a, maybe oh, a couple yeah. deleted oh, things. Yeah, well, let's see what we got. Yeah, this, so these are all of Robert's. Uh, yeah, we just want to make sure you saw these because he's amazing. It's so good. That's their Sleepy Hollow one. We really don't deserve you. We don't. Uh, this was a Nightmare Before Christmas one that we didn't include just because, we, you know, we talk about the movie, yeah. but not quite. This Beetlejuice. is the Beetlejuice uh, That's uh, treatment. Marks his grave. Yep. Dig here. Plan- Planet of the Apes. Nice. When I worked on the Let's Warner see. lot, my, my executive factory. had a copy of the Beetlejuice sequel in his safe. Wow. Oh, wow. I felt Beetlejuice really cool. goes Hawaiian? No, it wasn't Ghost Hawaiian. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's yeah. multiple Beetlejuice wow. 2 concepts out there in the world. Yeah. yeah. Uh, those so, are all... And by the way, Robert doesn't, like, take elements and just put things on top of them. Yeah, he, he creates, creates all that from yeah. hand. Which really... I was, like, six months after I worked here before I found that out. And yeah. it really blew my mind. I just assumed there was a way to, like, pull in... And then yeah, tweak. Yeah, yeah. No. But no, he's just figuring out how to make it look right. Yeah, yeah. he's brilliant. It's insane. Um, we don't. We, we, we do. Yeah, it's crazy. We don't no. deserve. Like we the really, chocolate really swirling? What? How do yeah. you just do that? I, I have no idea. I don't know. He's crazy. I think with the insane. Aquaman one, he was like, he he tricked it as water by using a smoke yeah. effect or something. It's, uh, it's, yeah, he, read, he did a tweet about how it's actually a smoke effect that he just made look like water. I make yeah. snarky comments about movies. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not on that level at all. Any closing Burton thoughts? I think I've exhausted him. I mean, he's just a fascinating person. When we first came up with this, I was really trying to think of a way that we could do a joke about how there's always children's choirs on all of the soundtracks, but you <laughs> yeah. can't play the music. So yeah, yeah, that's always. But really like hard. when I think of Tim Burton in my head, that's what I like about. Yeah. La, 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 yeah. Like, that's that's why we didn't really get into Elfman either, because it's like, right because you can't play the song. Yeah. So. Although we did get to uh, we did get to use one of my favorite uh, uh, first com a number tracks right. and b names for a track, which is the Beatles juicy one that I think was under the the trope the the, the psychology run is a, yeah. is a Danny Elfman esque tune and it's called Ed Skeleton, <laughs> <laughs> which could be a Tim Burton movie. Yes, it yeah. could be a Tim. I, 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 I wish Skeleton that Tim Burton would make a movie called Ed Skeleton. Edward Scissorhands, Ed Wood. And Skeleton. Oh, and Skeleton. That's one of my favorite track knockoff title tracks yeah. uh, well, names ever. Ed Skeleton. 
boys, that's our show. Yeah. Um, what a, well, uh, next week's Honest Trailer is, is a fun one. Uh, if you're going to be at WonderCon in mm-hmm. Anaheim this Friday night, yeah. uh, I think it's 6.30. I can't remember. 6.30, I believe. Room. Sounds right. We're premiering next week's mm-hmm. at WonderCon, so check that out. We're doing that. We're doing a movie fight. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to tease it? Do what's, we have yeah, a tease? Yeah, what's, what's our tease on this one? Hmm. Hmm. Mm. I don't. I'm gonna give it away if I come up with something. So I'll, I leave that to you guys. <laughs> yeah. There's so yeah. many parallel teases we could do. I ah, just feel like we shouldn't. Yeah. We shouldn't uh, yeah. tease it. Yeah. 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 Let's not do it. Yeah. Let's Everybody not. Everybody got that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yep. See you guys next week. Bye.